What's happening? If you've heard my new song, you would have heard this lyric. A Sunday roast. Now, I'm not very good at cooking, but I love food. And my mate reckons he's the bollocks at doing a Sunday roast. So today, he's going to teach me how. So we are here with the main man, Joe Seeley. Tell me, what is the most important thing about cooking a roast dinner? The best ingredients possible, getting the ovens up to temperature, and as much organic veg as possible. There we go. On that note, we're going to head to the shop. It begs the question, do we go in the van or do we go in the Ferrari? Hmm. What was it that makes you feel confident enough to know that you cook a wicked roast dinner? I think for me, I find cooking relax relaxing, so it was part of my self-care where I come home from work or whatever and I cook myself something nice to eat that I enjoy cooking and enjoy eating. And you're a giver as well, so I guess it's nice for you to like see other people enjoying something that you've been made from. Yeah, I think I always feel like I try and cook with love. Yeah. That's how I say to my wife, like, cook with love and you can you can taste that love. <laughs> and is she used to tasting your love? <laughs> Not anymore. <laughs> so tell me about this place, Joe. This is our local farm. They do all the fresh meats and veg and they've got kids areas. There's llamas over there, sheep, cows, they've got all their own vegetables in there. And I come here every Sunday for my meat. Yeah, nice. Should we go and have a little look at this? Yeah. <laughs> So how many different vegetables do you go for? Right, so I like to have the root veg, so we need onions, which I've already, but I've already got the onions. We're going to have broccoli, two broccoli, whole cauliflower. You can smell that, it's organic. Beautiful. We need some potatoes. We're cooking for three people, yeah. three dogs. Three people, three dogs. Yeah. So four potatoes. I'm going to go five potatoes. Five potatoes. Six potatoes. <laughs> Seven potatoes, <laughs> more. Perfect. I feel like... Onions. I feel like I want to get just one carrot from here, just okay, so, we can so add it to I the carrots. feel like... This will be a special carrot. We've just seen Bunny. Yeah, Bunny, and this is Kevin the carrot. Now let's go over to the meat. I'm going to that looks bit. So they're going to butcher the meat. And then They've done it. Then you're going to butcher the roast dinner. Hopefully not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did not. No, I want that then. I need enough for three people, three dogs. Perfect toe. I'm pretty this impressed. This is why I come here. But Don't get this at Tesco, yeah. No. You should never take the meat out of the no, I, I, I leave it straight on the side. So the tip is to always have it at room temperature. And I've seen it first. Don't take it out of the fridge yeah. and into the oven. Yeah. And let, oh, you've got quokka coffee. Quokka coffee, proper people for proper people. I'm involved in this. Yeah? <laughs> this is, he's plugging his own stuff. Fair enough, obviously. Nice. Giacomo Val Yam, as we say in Wales. What's that? Please, thank you very much. Oh, okay. Oh International Pretty cooking quick. show. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much, Thank guys. We'll much. See you next week. Bye. Bye. So we're back in the office, the kitchen. We've got all the ingredients laid out. Joe, what is the first step? We need to make our Yorkshire pudding batter. And for that, that is the most precise part of cooking a roast dinner, if you're going to make your own. Right. It's the hardest part. What do you gain and benefit and lose from not just going to Aunt Bessie's? Okay. They're much bigger, so there'll be this little bit of size of your head. Yeah. But if you get the mixture wrong, <laughs> the ingredients wrong, they won't. Right, okay. So everything else is quite easy, you can throw it together, but this, and I've tried to throw Yorkshire puddings together, it does not work if you don't measure. So it lives and dies on the Yorkshire really, doesn't it? Yeah. Okay. And we're gonna make our own today. And, and when you do get it right though, it straight away gives it that homemade like love yeah it completes your roasting yeah, it's an yeah, amazing yeah. it's a wow factor it can sit in the middle of the plate you can fill it with the roasting out you can do different things right. so you're going to need a whisk yeah whisk so you need 140 grams of plain or all-purpose flour okay yeah salted bang on the money we need four eggs four eggs four whole eggs you do it. Get stuck in. There's one. One. Two. Can you crack an egg with one hand? Oh god, I'll leave one for you to show me. <laughs> oh god, you can have a go. How are you doing that? <laughs> How do you do that? Just crunch it. No, crack it and put your thumb in it. <laughs> you did it, no, that, was, it. that was not smooth. You just cracked it in your hand. That right. don't count. You need to mix this. Okay, with a whisk. Gradually. Yeah? To it to its not complete fast. paste. Now you can doesn't matter at this point. Just till it gets to a paste and it needs to be smooth. Okay. 
You happy with that? Yeah, I'm happy with that. You've done the amazing. Consistency. Right. It's like put a it... sticky beige gloop. Right, put it back on the scale. Back on the scale. And you can either pre measure the milk or not, but you can set this to milliliters. Yeah, you can do it. I too. mean, what, how, many, how much are we putting in? 200 mil. 200 mil. So, should we not just a bit of a vibe? It'd be like All a quarter right. of that. Uh, that's 580. Five so, we need to slow it. You need to keep mixing. This is, but hey, I'm, I'm confused how this machine works. You gradually add the milk. There you go. To the back. But then, whoa, 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 because that's, that's no, like, no, no, no. So 200 is just, like, it's just under half, yeah. just above half. So I think one little. No, 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 no. You no, think that's it? 200 is not half, it's got five, six, eight in. Yeah, so just under, just under half is what I'm saying. But that's just thin, ain't Oh, right, right, yeah, right, right. Well, chill, bro, chill, because I, I think, what, are you happy with that? Well, you started saying you're not going by eye, and then no, you but didn't you ended wouldn't, by you wouldn't let me, you said it's a vibe. <laughs> <laughs> so I went with a vibe. Into here, crack a little bit of salt. A bit of salt, go on, you can do that bit. Because we're letting it chill, aren't we? You're going to let that now. Go to the fridge. Yeah. While you continue to cook. Now that should do six. Okay. Six, uh, six Yorkshire puddings. Six Yorkshire puddings, that. I'm feeling that, nice. That bit stressful. The first thing we need to do is peel potatoes. Yeah. But to get it thin. Yeah, I see my nan do this. To hold you. My mum does that as well. He's just she, going round. She only has two fingers. Yeah, get a peeler. Life's too short. If you don't have one of these, get one. This is the best thing ever. Instant boiling water. Oh, the tap. Oh, it's the best thing do ever. Do you know, I actually know an interesting story behind that. It was made by the copper soup people. No. But they basically realised that the thing stopping cup of soup being amazing is that it, it takes so long for the, like the water to boil to then boil the soup in the cup. So you're having two different processes. So the same man thought, well, how can I take out the time of boiling water? And they invented that. What was it called? Cooker? Yeah. Yeah, cooker. It's yeah. On one. So this is important now. You have to get salt and pepper in this water. Do you know why? To season it's very, it. very hard to season potatoes inside. Also, it's and any of our Caribbean friends so that we don't get taken the piss out of because I'm fed up with saying the white people don't season any of their food. I season everything. <laughs> I like to cut my angles because you want what you want is rough sides. So as many angles as you've got, make your potatoes crispier. Oh, nice. Okay, so okay. you start with the potatoes? I just boil the potatoes first. So we need to wash all the vegetables. Yeah. You have two choices with carrots. You can skin them, or you leave the skin on. I leave the skin on, in this way, the way I'm cooking it now, because I like it burning off, and it gives it a little bit of protection, because we're gonna cook it for longer. Well, for the sake of science. We're gonna do some. Yeah, we'll just do one that's skin off. Fucking Be careful with your fingers. Yeah. I'm gonna put the oven on now at 220. So it's up to temp. We're gonna chop the veg. Yeah. Okay, it can be done in any order. What would you like to chop first? Let's go for the carrots then, is it there? Okay, so you've got the Do carrots. you slice or do no, you... No, because in this, because I'm cooking it this way, I cook it like it's a stock. So I literally, I want like that. Cool, big old chunks, because yeah. it's gonna be in the oven so long. Two hours, and really, you know, I don't know if you know how to create a stock. You kind of, with this recipe, creating a vegetable stock within your roast dinner, and then you're gonna enjoy that, Top. Shallots. Shallots. You can use onions as well. Top off. Bottom Top off. off. Cut a little bit look, thinly in like that. Pull the skin off. And onions gonna add your gravy flavour. Yeah man. Adds to everything. Do you know what I love? The uh, onions in burger vans when they've been sitting there for so long yeah. and they've gone all like brown and just like sweet. Is there any oil on that pan? No, you don't need it. Don't need it? No. You don't need it with the vegetables and the beef. What you're actually getting, when the beef sits on top, you want the to create fat. Little, the fat from the beef will go through the meat, yeah. through the vegetables. So you're creating that flavour all the way through your dinner. Yeah. Which is great. Garlic. Smash the garlic. Smash the garlic. Just crush, crush it. Yeah. And it'll peel. Right, let's go for the garlic on that one. Crush it. it. Yeah. That's it. There you go, perfect. Now peel it. Oh, nice. Done. That's easy. That's bubbling, so I'm turning that down. With the garlic, the crushed ones will dice because they've already been, in a way, sliced. Yeah. Because they've been squashed. But sometimes, you know what I quite like? 
The lamps. It, yeah, like my nan will just leave like the whole garlic in there and you'll be eating your dinner and you'll just come across Taste like it. a whole island of garlic. And if you've been roasting the caramelised, that's beautiful. Yeah, man. But in this... But it's not for everyone's taste, I guess. No, and we want to spread. Because what we're doing at the bottom is, is you're also creating your gravy, yeah? Not everyone does this, but I think it's nice to have a little kick. Griffin, I ain't my bad name. That would have been, <laughs> I would have been in the floor. <laughs> and just kick, cut through it. With all the seeds and everything. Yeah, but that's the bit that's going to give you the... Jeez! Come on! But what I want is that little... At the back of my throat when I'm eating my gravy, I want that little... Yeah. Hello! That little woo! Come yeah. on! Cabbage. End off. Flat. In half. Yeah? Yeah. I'll show you and then you do it. However you want cabbage, so... You need this knife, really. Look, slice it like that. You like cabbage, right? It's one of the vegetables You're that I'm kind of like, I like. I like eating veg, but it doesn't actually do anything for me. Yeah. I'm not like there having Well, it. I'm not mad on cabbage. I mean, the cow is. That's why I end up cooking it all the time. That's the end. You don't want the middles. Yeah. These you want to put around the edge. Um, so, broccoli around the edge. Yeah. And what, you just break them off to the stem? Yeah. I break it off. I've, I think it's easier just to pull it apart. Yeah, but it gives it a nice sort of earthy vibe. It feels like someone's... Now this there. seems like a lot of veg, but actually when you cook it through, this will go to nearly nothing. Veg, you're rubbing it, yeah? And well, what about just if we twist it like that? I think I've just yeah. created a new flex. There you go. Oh, yeah. I mean, so far, this is looking spectacular. And whatever you put in this now is going into your gravy, yeah? And gravy is magic. Gravy is a key to love. You, between a Yorkshire and some gravy, I mean... You don't need a lot of no. that. Put that, put that down there. That I, quite, needs to, I quite like holding it. You want to hold it? For, for the sure. scene, it makes me look like I'm doing something. Right. So I'm going to put some, in, some oil for the pan. Yeah. Oil in the pan. That looks like special oil. It's chilli oil. Chilli oil. Nah. It's not for everyone, chilli oil. Is this like what you get in the pizza it's shop? Olive, no, it's not as strong as that. It's, a, it's a olive oil with chilli in. But because we're doing it now, it won't, it won't affect it. Yeah. Then you put it on the meat. Yeah. yeah, rub that. Rub it. Rub your meat. There you go. Get it in there. So. Roll it and all the salt. Uh, it looks good. Ready? Sizzling. And then because obviously you've got the bottom, you've got to do the same to the bottom. Do you like rock it over to get the yeah, edges? Just, what we do is, you know, that's not done yet. <coughs> right, see how it's like that? You need it darker than that. Right. This only takes five minutes. If you turn the heat down, there's a bit smoking. This is one of the, them jobs that you have to think about the smoke alarm in the house. Open a window or something. Yeah, we'll open the window. See how that's done? Yeah. That's what you want. So what you want to see is the meat sealed. So no red. <coughs> I think that chilli oil gets down the back of your throat. So bring the pan over. And then you present it to the vegetables. There you go. I mean, uh, you've got some now, uh, juice, right? Just, yeah. A little bit of oil. All, the, all goes back into the itself. Like, everything. Like a community. Everything goes back in. Now, the oven needs to be at 220 for 20 minutes. 220 okay. for 20 minutes, just to heat it up. Just to get it red hot. Are you ready? Before you show off your oven And door. also, you don't want the door. See, this, this chart, this, this line is the temperature, right? So now it's not 220, so it shows you how quick the temperature is the oven, yeah? Nice. So you have to... All the gadgets. With, especially with Yorkshire puddings. Yeah, I've got a wicked oven. story about the person that invented this. Caganal. Created the pot noodle and then he was looking for a way to cook it. I'm joking. <laughs> That's going in. See you later. Bosh. Okay. So how you know that the potatoes are ready, just put a knife in and if the knife starts going into the middle quite easily, not too soft, you want a bit of firmness. Like a good boob. <laughs> you want to drain them into your colander. Keep your pan, okay? And you want them a bit rough. So, see where they're fraying? Yeah. You want that puffiness, cloudiness. Back into here. Back in the pot. Cover. 
So the meat's been in the oven for 30 minutes. Yep. We're moving on to the spuds and to the Yorkshires now. We are. But first of all, we've got to do the potatoes. So we're going to put the oil in. You can use any oil you like. Now I like using some sunflower oil. That's a healthy amount of oil. Yeah, because you want it hot. And then these, you want to fill like half a centimetre. Oh, geez, yeah. Yeah. So you, you, you want to buy yourself a big old glug. Yeah, oil. I mean, the best thing is low, uh, low pat, full fat, lard. For low these. pat? Yeah, low pat, lard. What's the pat mean? I don't know, it's what it's called, mate. Just pat. <laughs> yeah. And then what you got, what's important here is that the oil's hot, so that's got to go in. Right, and, and these as well, yeah? No, not yet for that, because these are going to take roughly an hour. And they're going to take 30 minutes. Yeah, so the oil's hot now. Yeah, the oil's hot. You can see it bubbling away in the oven. So, so we'll bring it out. Go on then, Joe. We have to do it as quickly as possible. Because you want to keep the heat in the oven. Keep the heat in the oven. And also, you want the heat in the oil. Heat in the oil, absolutely. Right, and then these are getting poured into the oil. Yeah, slowly, because you don't want oh, to be shit. splashed. <laughs> you ready? <laughs> no, I'll help you. There you go. So as you got that, let's give them a little... You hear that sizzle. Sizzle, sizzle. You just want to turn them. Oh, all right, cool. Back over to me. Over to you. To me, to you. And we're going to go back in the oven. Bosh! Now, we'll now they're on. Okay, now let's go. We need to go over to the other oven. So we're going to put this oven to 230. Now, I'm lucky we've got two ovens so I can cook both things at the same time so it's all ready at once. If you haven't, cook your potatoes and meat first, put it to the side, cover it over, keep it hot which it'll, it'll stay hot for hours, and then put that oven up to 230. Yeah. Get that in there. We'll put it in the oven. You need to keep that flat, and you need to wait until that oil smokes. So this bit's super serious, and I know you want to get this right, and I'm quite happy for it to all be on you. So I'm just going to stand back, and you yeah. just do your thing. This is the health and safety bit. So the oil's now at 230, it's red hot. We've got to get it out on here, get the liquor in quickly before it cools down. Do it. Back in the oven, okay? Go, 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 go. Here we go. Can you shut that door? I feel like this is an episode of Casualty. There you go. That is in. You can see it all fizzling up. It looks like the sausage and butter. That's exactly what it needs to look right, like. Right, you ready? Yeah. Shut the door. Cool. That was smooth, you know. That was smooth. I've never done that so smooth. Come on! <laughs> yes! <laughs> I wish I could do that. See, they're already rising. We rise up! So for 25 minutes, you do not touch that door. Cool, this is really exciting. So you can already see some of them are coming up. It's mesmerizing. Yeah. <laughs> it makes you worry, doesn't it? It's full of character, look at them. I like, they look so unique. Well, the potatoes are, we need to probably have a look at, so should we have a look? Yeah, go on. There's only one way of testing them. Sounds pretty crispy, doesn't it? So now we need to take the meat out. Remember, we don't want to pierce this meat at any point, yeah? until we cut it, until the longer you leave that meat, the juicier it will be. It's not looking like there's that much liquid. No, but what we'll do, look at all the stuff at the bottom. And that's the stuff. No, that's it. And then we're going to put this on here. Do you want to push that out for me? Into, into here. Wait, what, so the veg? Yeah, push the veg in. Okay. And we're going to leave that for a few minutes just to run through. Yeah. Because everything that comes out of that is pure beef goodness, vegetable goodness. Yeah. So the, well, the stuff in there is like crack of the gravy well. Yeah, it's a crack of the gravy well. I'm going to put that back in there to keep and up. And you leave these in there? I'm going to leave them in and I'm also going to put the bottom of this in. Yeah. No, I'm here for that. So really, you want as much flavour as you can get out yeah, of it. Yeah, yeah. Right. Look at that, they'll squeeze like a towel. A little bit of anything, anything that's on that. Now you can't go wrong with gravy this way. So we're doing that, first of all, just to... Yeah. You can see how the colour there you changes go. straight away. So, so that it's now, got substance in it. Yeah, so that's all like what you, you know, pure liquor if yeah, you like. It's not pure, running clear. No. So then that's deglazed it. Right, so we've got the bisto. You've got the bisto. There is no technique to this. How do you like gravy? Thick? Thick, man. Totally all right. So we, I just keep adding. And how much gravy? Depends what you, how much you like. Yeah, I, I, I love, love it. Like. 
Nicole, for example, I don't think puts enough on it. She just covers bits and pieces where I want it like oh, sweet. I want a soup. Yeah, it's half half the meal for me. Oh, like roast dinner soup. Cover it up. Swimming in it. Yeah, man. Then a salted a salted roast potato or gravy. Oh. Mm. It's, it's the simple things though, isn't it? Like that's a real simple thing. I mean, it's far too hot, but. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> right. So do we cut the ropes off? No, I don't. I start going and then they they come off. You'll cut through, if you know what I mean. So as you, so you use them as a, a yeah. So as you slice. Yeah. What's the optimum thickness? That's that's personal taste as well, isn't it? Right. So we should have medium in the middle. More well done at the towards the end, yeah. So let's go try and get it thin. Oh, I've botched this. <laughs> that's all right. There you go. Look, we've got good look, pink. This is quite thick, I think. Yeah, you've cut it thick. <laughs> Oh, There's steaks. <laughs> right, try and make it like a slice of ham. That one looks good. They still be on the thick side, isn't it? It's all right. Look at the pig nose. Not bad, is it? I can hear Will starting to make noises. Yeah, I can hear like, the or, dogs. Orgasm noises. They all know. So then you can pull the, pull the strings out. I think that'll do. We can leave the other bit. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm going to do now is this. Stick this in with the gravy. I like what you're doing. So we're going to get this over here as smoothly as possible. And all of that meat juice that's come out and the meat. Right, so what I like, I love the little ones, the little crispy Everyone ones. does. But I also not, like to know that I've got a bit of substance as well, so I want a bit of potato, so I'm going to do a mixture of the two. Um, I like the look of that one. Because that's the other thing, potatoes are all individual, so I like eye them up as my own personal selection. Thing is, I don't really want to stop putting them on. <laughs> Joe's fuming at the moment because he's thinking he's taking all the No, no, I don't matter. You do you. You do you. Where's my long. There he is. There's a little fatty. There's Kevin the There's your one. picked out from the shop earlier. Oh, also, yeah. It doesn't look like a huge difference between the ones with skin and the ones without skin. No, there isn't. Right, that's, that's enough of that, I think. Yeah, I think I'm, I'm quite happy with that. Do you know what? I think I need enough potato. That one looks great. Cool. Maybe another little bit of meat. I'm going to put my Yorkshire on first. Oh, you start around the Yorkshire? I start the Yorkshire. Oh, that's interesting. And lay around. See, I like sectioning stuff. I like it to have like little, little welds. So there's a little spot there for my Yorkshire. And then I'm just going to absolutely cover it in gravy. A nice thick, gloopy gravy. Can we show Joe your trick? Yeah. Come here. Sit. Bang. No! <laughs> Go and get some. Go on. Go on. All right. You think they're done? Well, I'm very hungry, so... Um, Open it. I'm at the point where it's like, I don't mind if they're done. Open yet. it. All right, you ready? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Take your time now, there's no rush. You should be able to just easily pull it out. I mean, these look fun. That one just looks like it's... That's put it on here, because it'll be... That one's a vibe. They'll just pull out, like muffins. There you go. The perfect you should put in for the perfect use roast dinner. Um, I mean, this one is proper vibey, so I'm gonna stick that there. Okay. And then are you ready? Slot this all over. <laughs> There you go. Roast beef with Yorkshire puddings, my perfect Sunday roast. Go. The thing is with you, you talk a good game and you chat a lot of shit, but I have to give it to you on this one. <laughs> See you later, mate. So there we have it. We just showed you how to cook a roast dinner with Joe Seeley. Thank you very much to him for helping me out. If you want to like this video, subscribe to my YouTube page. It'll be much appreciated. And if you like the song that was underneath when we played earlier, Pub People, Eddie Brett, it's out now.
followed by a Sunday roast 